When I was at primary school, I couldn't run any race. And I was very competitive from a very young age. And my one friend was such a great runner. And um, from there on, I decided at high school, the only thing that I could actually go and do was to become a long distance runner. Because for that, you can practice. Um, because I wasn't a natural sprinter. And so at high school, my first coach was Mr. Farnes Boysen. He was a phenomenal leader um, of high school Miller Park. And I just started in standard six and I practiced extremely hard. And I was very proud to run against Zola Bat in standard nine at Sassel. And I actually thought I was going to win. So that was my real experience of becoming a long distance athlete, persevering, go around that court day after day, getting up five o'clock in the mornings to go and run at school. Um, my dad was also a great leader in my life and I remember the days that he always took me to go and run a, uh, around that race court day after day and then ultimately becoming successful. But there were also the hard sides, you know, where you felt you weren't properly prepared, um, where you actually, when you, you got a bee sting, you said, no, Mr. Boyson, I don't want to go and run this race. And then you realize it's not so bad. Once you're on that court, uh, course, you can actually go around, you can actually do it. So that was my real first experience of getting to know myself better and to become an athlete at high school. Now, having a dad in military, he said to me, I need to have my army straight after school. Um, that was 1985. And then I traveled all the way to Paris, and it wasn't Paris in the Free State, it was Paris overseas. And he said to me, go and work at the embassy. When I arrived at the embassy, they said to me, you are too young. Um, you will not qualify to work here. So I had to go and find alternative means to, to find a job. Very privileged to work in the upper class area of Paris. We could see the Art de Triomphe from our apartment, but there, very hard learning lessons. Uh, we were two ladies working in the house. Proper, proper um, upper class where we were treated very badly. But that is part of the journey of growing up and appreciating your home. I remember the day when I arrived back in South Africa. It was the best day of my life. Appreciating my, my home and appreciating life in general. So higher education was an interesting journey for me. Um, my father wanted me to go into the politics. As I said, he played a very big role into my life, leadership, um, very strict in our upbringing, hard work, he was an extreme hard worker himself and ultimately my mom decided to get me properly tested and the guy said, well, go and study to become a chartered accountant. To be honest with you, I didn't even have a clue what it meant because I didn't have accountancy at school. And then the journey started, had the privilege of sitting next to a lady that was five years older than me in the first day at university. She came from PACT. She was a ballet dancer and still till today we're friends. She now lives in Australia. She recently came to the country and she realized we had very limited time to, you know, to do well at our studies. So we both committed, we worked hard and um, very grateful to then got my degree. And as I mentioned earlier, the only job that I've applied for in my entire career was my articles. And um, my articles was also, again, there were people that we learned lessons from during our articles. Articles is one of the best feeding schools for anybody in life because it teaches you to become structured in your thinking process. And that, that I really enjoyed. I was um, then privileged to be transferred to Johannesburg and then we became Coopers. 
I ended up in the corporate finance team. And on the corporate finance team, we worked on projects, large projects. And that was my first encounter of realizing how important it is to form great relationships. So I worked on the Mugugao Dam project in Swaziland. And being a woman, there were a lot of women also in government at that point in time. And I formed great relationships with the women where they gave me very interesting information that guided us and helped us on that project. And then from there on, went on to work at ABN Amro Bank. We started the uh, division for ABN Amro Bank and our boss, a leader, Mr. Otto von den Bosch, what I learned from him, every morning he would walk around the office and greet every single person in such a friendly manner that you felt welcome at the office. And that is something that I still like to do till today, is to go around the office and greet people in a friendly manner because we all know work is such a big part of our, our lives. Then the best learning school after ABN Amro Bank that I can recommend to anybody was Investec Bank. Went to work in the private equity team. We reported directly to the big bosses at Investec Bank. And one of the lessons I learned is later on is it's great to go and learn on someone else's balance sheet. And they were fantastic in the, in the things that they exposed us to. We had to present our deals to them. Um, all our deals were sadly rejected. So, but they learned us to be vigilant in what we do, to really focus. Um, they often would say, go and focus. You have to focus in life. You can't be everything to everybody. And in the deals, and I still say it to my team, they would say to us, fast forward. If we were too long-winded, we had to get very quickly to the point. And in today's fast moving world, you have to really assess very quickly where you want to go and um, make a quick call on a lot of things. You can't be long winded in business. And that was the, the great lesson that I learned from the, the team at Investec Bank. One of the best learning schools. The senior management of Investec Bank, Mr. Stephen Kossef, Glenn Berger, all those people, um, you know, stood out. They are phenomenal leaders. They know how to mentor young people. They've got a passion for it, uh, which I respect very much. And whenever you leave, they also make you feel great the day you leave. It's not never on a, on a bad foot that you leave from Investec Bank because they, they know they grow you up to go and become the person who you are meant to be the day that you leave. Mentorship is, in my view, something where you have to be straightforward with people. Um, there's a beautiful saying, and it, it comes from the Bible, to say, rebuke in the open. It's better than to love, to have hidden love. And that is what I appreciate from uh, mentorship and from the Investec days. They're very honest and very transparent, but in a way that always builds you up, not to break you down. And that's one of the other lessons that I've learned from a very young age, is that I want to work in an environment where I feel wanted and where I feel I can contribute and where I feel I can make a difference. After Investec, being in private equity, I decided I really want to get onto the other side of the fence and get to know firsthand what it's like to build your own business. So I decided to join a very small organization that manufactured vitamins. And there was a professor there, all the characters that you can think of, all the clever scientists, and um, we were excited to launch our own brands. We moved into this beautiful new facility. I still remember standing in that empty factory and we said, yes, we're going to build our own factory here. So I had to go and knock on the door of the IDC 
and help the company to raise our own funding. That was a very tedious and long process, but I can tell you that day when that money came in from the IDC, we celebrated. Little that did we know this is actually where the journey starts. And from there on, the, the lessons that I learned from that experience, those three to four years in my life were invaluable. Tough shareholders, um, a shareholder in the end that really didn't like me, even though I thought that I was this brilliant person, whereas, you know, that person saw it completely differently. And because I'm a, in natural, I'm a very positive person. So that was a great experience. The lessons that I learned around working capital management, not being able to always um, pay our suppliers on time, which was very, very tough, but then ultimately flying down to Cape Town to meet with them, making arrangements. And the other tough lesson, implementing our first time a great new computer system, and then unfortunately this computer system ordering all the wrong stock, which we didn't have orders for, to manage through that process, walking into that warehouse, seeing all these bottles and all these products that we've manufactured, and we know we don't have orders for those. And then to work through that entire process. So that was actually one of the greatest experiences in my life. Then I had my son, and as you can see, I've waited very long to have children after my Paris experience, because I learned the hard way. You have to be ready to have kids, and, and, and because it's a huge responsibility. And then I could have a small break with my first child, and after that, I went back into um, in the corporate finance environment, I started my one best friends from Pricewaterhouse days, also had a child. And we could start to do corporate finance work together. We started off valuing businesses. And then slowly, I started to go and ask advice from my ex-corporate finance people on certain of the transactions we encountered in. And soon they invited me again to come and help them. And that was just before the listing booms. And we started to list and ultimately our company actually listed the most companies on the alternative exchange. And again, me hearing one person saying over the radio they would love to list their company, made a cold call. So being a leader, you have to be brave and courageous. You can't sit and wait for business to come your way. You have to run out there and go and find it. So we made a cold call to this company. I still remember the day when we met Mr. Trevor uh, Edwards and Mr. Stan Whitfield. Great, great business people. I learned many lessons from Mr. Trevor Edwards. One of them is how important it is to share with your team and not just to keep everything for yourself. And we started on our journey. We listed in Aleni on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. And our biggest success was when we did the reverse listing of Sipla Metpro, a 1.2 billion rand deal um, in those days. That was in 2005 and 2006. And then part of the listing booms, we sold our business to Vunani and also a great mentor and a leader, Mr. Ethan Duby, um, had the privilege to work with him. And from there, we just, the one thing led to the other. And one of the listings that I did was the Mbali Group. In those days, in 2006, it was called Plasticol Holdings. And while I was at Vunani, I could see the business really going in, an, in a very wrong direction. And I asked my boss if I could please have a six-month sabbatical to go and assist the group. And to be honest, my six-month sabbatical turned out to be a seven-year journey. So my journey at Plasticol in those days was very interesting. And um, it started off by first going to see who's going to help me, who's going to become my team. And, you know, you, you go around and you ask people because when a business is 
and a turnaround situation. You have to be so calm and collected. And you have to bring back knowledge of people who actually know what's going on and what's happening. And I remember I was very naive when I went, went in. I thought again as a, at that stage, it's going to be easy. Um, I remember I interviewed very big men to actually take on the position and at the end of the day I decided that I would like to do it myself. And the journey started by first getting people around me that's going to help me on this journey because the biggest lesson that I had to learn is you cannot do things on your own. It's never going to work and you need to get into a position where you inspire people to come along with you on this journey. So in the beginning, it's exciting. You've got a lot of energy in your tank and you're ready to take this on and you're ready to run around this block a couple of times. The reality is people are often different and they often have their own different um, agendas and visions. So the reality is during this journey, you have to continuously, and one of my favorite singers in the world is Madonna. So you often have to reinvent yourself and reposition yourself on this journey. And when you lose people around you, do not be afraid to look out for the next person that's going to come along with you on this journey because during this journey, we all learn from each other continuously and we all make a lot of mistakes. And it's all about you repositioning yourself continuously and continuously being brave and courageous and continuously stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, and when I met Alma McKenzie, our original founder of our group, who started our group 37 years ago, I thought we had it difficult. If I go back 37 years ago when she had to go and source her products in a war stricken Rwanda, where she had to send faxes to the Himalayas to get some of her raw ingredients, then I realized my journey is actually easy. So we have to start putting things into perspective where we at in our lives. But again, the journey is fascinating. Learn so much lessons along the way. I mean, in my case, when things got so tough and last year, particularly, I went through a very, very tough stretch. I f remember I drove one day on the highway and I could physically feel the markets contracting in the marketplace. We in the luxury end, I could just feel markets contracting. So what do you do again? I jumped out, I went to see um, Mr. Kevin Hederwick uh, from Famous Brands. I knocked on his door and it's so fantastic. He was there to meet with me. He was there to take me through a couple of mentorship sessions on how they do their planning um, at Famous Brands. And it was great insights that he was just prepared to share with me. So again, I encourage people you know, I realized one of the other lessons that I've learned at in, during my journey is to always work with companies that's better than your own company and better than your own organization. So today we work with Medicines Control Council companies that's manufacturing our brands. We've aligned ourselves with a distributor that's ISO 9001, GMP approved. I traveled to Iceland to meet with great scientific people to have the best in our stable and it's possible. So with, with Mr. Kevin Hederwick sharing some of his insights, showing me how to simplify our business has greatly assisted me during a very, very difficult time to take my focus away from all the negative, the difficult things, and to again focus on positive things and things what I rather can do than to, to sit in a little corner and sulk, have a lot of excuses for everything that has gone wrong um, and why did it go wrong and blame other people. As a leader, 
I've realized I have to look in the mirror and whatever happens in that business is again a direct reflection of decisions that I've taken together with my team and things that we've decided to implement as a team. Some of the hardest lessons that I had to learn at Imbali Beauty is that people have different agendas and I know people with different agendas will also from their perspective justify when um, things, when their agendas are different to yours. And I think one of the hardest lessons that I had to learn was when the previous management of our group decided to go into competition with us. And all the legal court cases that I had to work with, through. I remember in the mornings I would launch, I would sit in the high court of Cape Town and in the evenings I would launch upgraded products because we just returned from Switzerland upgrading our brands. And it's very hurtful to sit and, you know, when people are not completely truthful in their dealings. But I had to learn the very hard way that that is business. And I had to learn not to continue to look over my shoulder and to look at the past, but then to look forward and to look at what I've got on my plate and to make that work. And not to always think that what the other people have on their plates are better than what I've got on my plate. So it's a journey of putting people then also at ease that we have to go through the, this process. I must be honest with you, I don't really like to go through a legal process. Um, my husband is an attorney, that is his life and his world, but it's a hard process. And it's often things where you have to go through principal matters. Um, and I also have a board that I have to report back to. And a, a, a legal process is a process that's not always the right and the fair way. And that's a another lesson that I had to learn. It's often the technicalities that will determine the outcome which is not necessarily the fair outcome. But when you look back, you often will also see the outcome is the right outcome. And particular last year when certain things happened in our organization, where we had a distribution contract in place, which were for unforeseen reasons terminated. Uh, because what I've realized is Foreign countries don't always understand what's happening in our life and in our world and on ground level. And at the time we were so, we were, I remember I sat there until 12 o'clock at night waiting to speak to the United States of America and waiting for them to take my calls and I was devastated. I was against the ground. The reality is we are so much stronger after actually the termination of that contract because we could introduce fresh, new and something particularly really very close to my heart, local brands into our stable and our franchisees, some that were very negative because we were so rigid in doing things our way, are now so ener energized by, by the freshness that we've now introduced back into the group. So I'm extremely excited about things that you, that you think is the end of the world, is actually the beginning of the world. And when I traveled to Switzerland with Karen, we called the project Project Butterflies. And little did I know, when you go through a butterfly process, you go through an entire transformation process as a person. And after that process, you're a complete different person. And it's the renewal of your mind. It's the renewal of your thought process. It's a different way of looking at things in its entirety. My final message uh, is to really say to people, press in. One of the biggest lessons I had to learn is don't go and lie down in a corner. Go and stand up, be brave, be courageous 
and just keep on walking. Just keep on walking. It's not that difficult and there's always help. Always somebody out there that's going to embrace you, that's going to give you great advice, that will open that door to take you to the next level.